Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Still buzzing, I hope, after Friday's win. Nice big win, 3-1 victory, and confirming, pretty much, another season at least for West Ham in the Premier League. Now that's all said and done, it's time to start looking ahead to next season, because the transfer window opens next Monday. So the final whistle goes against Villa next weekend, and, pff, I don't know, eight hours later, the transfer window's open. Time to get wheeling and dealing. And also the pre-season at the end of this, before next season, it's a lot shorter now. I know the transfer window's open for, for a couple of months, but I imagine we're going to be playing the first four or five games with the transfer window still open. So you don't really want to be going into match day one with half your business still to be concluded. Nobody wants that. That's why they brought it forward, or the, the deadline day forward to before match day one. Um, so it's important that we get it going quick. We get the t two or three key players in before our first game of next season, whenever that is. I assume it's going to be this start to the middle of September because of the Euros next year they can't push it back too far otherwise they'll be cramming all the fixtures in um, but they might wait till October I guess and tie it in with what the government's saying about fans returning we'll wait and see one thing's for sure we need to be quick and David Moyes to be fair is getting off the mark he's gone to two games before that though so Czech will become a West Ham player uh, 13 and a half million still to be paid to Prague so that's good news I expect him to be announced next Monday really um, don't see why he wouldn't be it's all done uh, so that's good news but that's 13 and a half million gone out of the budget before he even started and the budget was probably 13 and a half million anyway to start with but David Moyes yesterday had two games in London two championship fixtures so he first attended Charlton against Wigan obviously he's got a bit of interest with Josh Cullen there so I'd imagine he would have been having a look to see how he was getting on and playing um, but the two transfer targets we've been linked with this week both played um, keep for the centre back. Don't know much about the both of these players to be honest with you. Can't say I watch Wigan, um, but keep uh, come from PSG's academy, and um, he's had some other clubs watching him as well. But Robinson's one that's probably more of interest to us. But the one and a half million fee that's going around is a bit misleading, I think, because I think that's heavily depending on Wigan getting relegated, which is still uncertain as far as I'm aware, because. We don't know when they're getting their 12 points deducted. I read something that was suggesting that they're a bit harsh, the FA. They're a bit, like, tough on this. And that is, if Wigan stay up, even if you take the 12 points off and they stay up, which is in the balance at the minute, they've got one more game to go, um, then they take the 12 points off at the start of next season. However, if the 12 points would relegate them after their final game, there's a chance 12 points could come off this season, therefore put them into the, bo the bottom and relegate them. That's a bit brutal, um, but I actually hope, for the sake of football, because that, sh what's going on at Wigan's shoddy, isn't it? Someone bought, bought them over, and four weeks later, the administration, I hope for football, and I hope for Wigan, that they do survive, uh, even with the 12-point deduction, and they are playing championship football next season. But, for West Ham to get Robinson for one and a half million, we need them to go down, if they stay up. He's worth around eight to ten million. That's his transfer fee has been touted around. I'm given their financial difficulty, I'm not sure we'd have to pay all of it, but somewhere in the middle, I don't know, five million or something. But what's more interesting is that David Moyes has gone to watch these two players, which would insinuate that the interest is genuine. We are after at least one of them. Um, like I said, I don't know. I've not seen either of these players play too much. But one thing we do know is everyone can see is their defence is really good. Wigan's defence do not concede a lot of goals. Um, they were down the bottom fighting relegation and for the second half of the season they've been climbing the table and they've been doing that well that actually you can deduct 12 points off them potentially and they'll still stay up so it's a testament to how well they've done the keeping clean sheets is a big part of their game and we're looking or linked to to the back four so it'd be interesting to see but after that he went over to QPR and now we all know which QPR player we're interested in Eze. Um, if it is him, there's also some talk of us being linked to their left back Manning when we did a video on this channel in January, maybe. I can't remember. It was about championship players, which 10 championship players Moyes could be. Well, it was January. It have been for the January transfer window. Or maybe it was just after, ahead of the summer. I can't remember. But Manning and Eze were both in it as well. Um, so the the thing with Manning is his positioning. I have watched a little bit of QPR. While I watch NAF all of again, I've seen a little bit of QPR. And he, he's quick and he gets forward really well because he's not really a left back by trade. He's played everywhere. He's played up front, uh, left midfield. He's been converted to left back, so he gets forward really, really well. His statistics are, certainly back up the fact that he's naturally a wide player. Defensively, while he's tough at tackling, he's good at tackling. Defensively, his positioning's a little bit 
not great. So that, that would concern me. Ez is the interesting one. He's one of the best players in the championship, one of the most sought after. I think he needs to add a little bit of consistency to his game um, in order to make it in the top flight, but he would excite people. He's such a young age as well. He's very versatile, can play in the attacking midfield position or he can play on the left, which, well, I say very versatile, it's two positions. You could possibly play a bit deeper, but that would suit what we're looking for. If you think about the team that we're playing at the minute, um, Bowen's going to keep that position. Whoever, someone's up front. It's not going to be easy. But the two positions that are up for grabs, are up for debate, is the left one, which is Fernandes has been playing, but it's not really suited to him. And then the sort of the role that Nobles had, um, a free role if you want to call it, there's attacking midfield or whatever. I still think that's Fernandes' best position. If you want to see the best of Fernandes, I think that's where you need to get him. But then where, who do you put him from where Fernandes was? Maybe Eze is the answer. I don't know, but it's just interesting that David Moyes was at both of these games. And it would suggest that our interest in at least two of those players is genuine. That that's who we are looking to go for. And that's potentially exciting. The, but the, the reason we need to get this sorted quick, I say quick, the reason we need to make sure we get stuff sorted is next season the five substitutions are staying. Okay, I don't like it. I think it's a stupid rule. I think it benefits Man City the most and whoever's got the, the weakest squad and depth is going to benefit the least from it. And when it comes to, if you are Burnley, Burnley don't use much subs. You know, I watched them yesterday against Norwich. And um, I think out their bench, there are nine players on the bench. Only three of them had made a first team appearance for the club. And that's not good for Burnley. It's it's not their fault. It's just the new rules. But could you imagine being 1-0 up away to Man City? The only thing you've got in your locker, apart from organisation and stuff, is fitness. Fitness is what's going to see you through. But then if Man City are able to bring on... The likes of Mares and Bernardo Silva, I know. It's just a bit... It doesn't sit well with me. But anyway, my point is... Sorry, I'm going off tangent there. The point is, five substitutions. Moyes clearly does not trust half his bench. He just doesn't trust them, okay? He doesn't trust Masuaku. Because Creswell's not been great, but he, he, Masuaku... He, he come on for a couple of minutes against Norwich. So it's a token gesture. And he still didn't even come on left back. He came on left midfield. Um, Wilshire's not really getting too much of a sniff. Anderson, you know, while uh, the Watford game wasn't primed, you could, you'd have thought he would have got on for a few minutes and stuff. So clearly, he's clearly looking at that bench, and he only, you know, I think Yarmolenko's earned a little bit of trust. I think he trusts Lanzini a bit. But when I think he trusts a little bit. Um, but it's important now that Moyes bulks out his squ- squad, so that his bench next season, I assume the nine players on the bench are staying, they're not going to cut back to seven, but you can still make five. So if the nine players on the bench are staying, it's important that he's got nine players on there, eight outfielders on there, that he feels comfortable bringing on. At no point should he turn around and look at his bench and see a jetty and think, well, I'm never bringing you on, so let me have a look at the rest of them. He needs players on there that he feels, whatever happens on the pitch, he has a replacement for. That is a slight advantage with the nine players on the bench that you can cover every position normally. In theory, you'd have one full-back, wouldn't you? You'd have someone that can play right-back and just hope your left-back doesn't get injured. There's no excuse for that now. You can have a left-back, a right-back, and a centre-back. Um, and your keeper. And you've still got five positions on your bench left. So depth is going to be important next season. It's really, really going to be important. Using your bench, I think, is going to be huge. Now, whether Moyes does that or not, I don't know. This isn't really the point of the video. My point of the video is making sure the bench is that strong. And we need to get going quick. In the transfer window. Um, but anyway, that's it for me, really. I just thought I'd talk about the fact that Moyes has been out and about scouting. It's good. It's good. I will give him his credit. I do like that about him. I just hope that before, in his first tenure here, we got this story, if you like. I say story. Everton fans warned us of it. And they called him Dithering Dave. It was them that called him Dithering Dave. And while I call him Dithering Dave about his lack of substitutions, they gave him that name because of his lack of transfer activity that he would have to go and watch players and when he was doing that they were missing out on players because either Moyes just hadn't decided on them or he hadn't seen them enough and other clubs were coming and get them and they, that's why they called him Dithering Dave and I just hope that Bowen and Solchek two players that Moyes clearly hasn't gone to watch um, I, I don't care if it's Moyes is signing or Sullivan signing through agents or whatever I'm not that bothered to be honest with you the point is, Moyes got given them. He integrated Solchek in immediately. He's 
took a bit of time with Bowen and I feel like he shackled Bowen a little bit but the last few games it feels like he's got Bowen into his best position now and we're seeing the best of Bowen so Moyes has done really well with soul checking Bowen two players he didn't see so I just hope that he relaxes a little bit with his um his old school rule of thumb I must go scout them two or three times before we sign them because we can't do that anymore can we given the the travel restrictions the fact that there's no games and when the games are on it's all a little bit different anyway um, so I'm actually hoping it's going to be a bit of a change of Moyes' methods in the transfer market and he just trusts whatever his instinct a bit more his scouts a bit more um, I just hope we just see a little bit of a less of the dithering in the transfer market I'm hopeful I'm hopeful actually but anyway that's it for me I'm going to bail tomorrow night Monday night I've got the preview with Gonzo we're looking at the Manchester night game obviously with a bit of relaxation about it we get beat we get beat oh, hopefully we'll go there and have a have a go at them and you know we saw Norwich do it to Chelsea because they were already relegated so the pressure was off the pressure's off us a bit now so I'd like to think we can go there and have a pop at them anyway if you, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like on it, scout you around here. And if you do know these players, let us know your opinion of them below. So you've got Robinson and Kipri at Wigan, Eze and Manning at QPR. If you know them, let us know your opinion. And I shall catch you tomorrow night with Gonzo. See you in a bit.